Nice. What are you doing? Oh, that's my boy. Hi everyone. Before we get into today's video, thank you all so much for being viewers of the channel commenting, giving us thumbs up. I really appreciate that. I love seeing all the comments and I've gotten some great ideas from you out there. There's a lot of people out there that are a lot smarter than me. So keep giving me your ideas in the comments. If you've purchased a sticker, thank you all of you that have purchased a sticker. We still have some left. So if you'd like to get one, look in the description below, click the link, go over to PayPal, shoot us 10 bucks, and my daughter will mail you out a sticker with a little note in it from us from both Lefty and me. So thank you all very much. Let's get into the video. Hi everybody. Uh, if you're watching this video, you might already be someone that's bought an ambulance or you're thinking about buying an ambulance and joining the fleet of us out here that are, that are living in our rigs and you might have stumbled across a topic that concerns you and that is getting insurance for your truck. Uh, when I was doing my planning, I remember um, you know, watching a lot of videos, doing a lot of reading about what it's like to set up and convert an ambulance and so I, I had that in my mind um, as I was doing my, my planning to, to purchase a truck and am I going to be able to, to get over that hurdle? Well, obviously I got insurance because I'm legally driving this truck around. There's a lot of ambulances on the road that I'm sure are also legal. So can you get insurance for an ambulance? Yes. Can you run into trouble trying to get insurance for an ambulance? Yes, I know this because I've received messages from some of you that you're having trouble. And a recent message that I received really alarmed me because this, this person's inability to get insurance has now made them think that maybe they've made a mistake in purchasing an ambulance and when I when I read that it really uh, it really concerned me because I do know that you can get insurance and you can get it pretty easily that's what we're going to talk about today so uh, I have received I'm going to guess 50 messages from people with this exact question How'd you get insurance? Where do you got insurance? What'd you do to get insurance? Getting insurance for your ex ambulance, is it a problem? Listen to this question. Getting insurance for your truck, is it a problem? Do you hear the difference between those two questions? I've had insurance on my truck for over a year and a half and I've had no issues. I actually had to file uh, a small claim when I was, um, <laughs> at a, when I was at a, a local trailer hitch install company, and I shared this in a video way back when, I was in their parking lot and I went to back up to get out of the way of a truck that was pulling in, and boom, I hit something. Now this was before I had my backup camera, so I was backing up blind, but I was in an area where there wasn't anybody parked when I pulled in. Well, five minutes later, I didn't notice 2018 Cadillac something, some kind of SUV had pulled up, cozied right up behind me. And when I put it into reverse and, and idled backwards to get out of the way of this truck that was pulling in, boom, I backed into this Cadillac. Long story short, contacted my insurance carrier. They paid for the damage to the other car. Because there was no one in the car when I hit it, I didn't even have to pay my deductible which was awesome. That's some, some clause they have. Uh, it was property damage and not an automobile accident. So anyways, so I have a legitimate auto insurance policy on my truck and it's been about a year and a half. So what is your truck? Is it an ambulance? Is it a work truck? Is it a van? Uh, as you know, my truck is based on a Ford E450. And on my title for this vehicle, 
it shows the vehicle as an ECO4 van. So that's an Econo line 450 van. That's what it says on the title. Nowhere on the title or in the description of the vehicle on the title does it say anything about being an ambulance. Because when this vehicle was manufactured and sold by the Ford Motor Company, it was a van. Uh, it's what's called a cutaway van. So it has the, the front cab of a van and then the remainder of it is cut away. So they're called cutaway vans. That's not even on the title. It just says van. Now when you add a vehicle to your insurance policy, and everybody knows this, you add it by the VIN number, the vehicle identification number. It's all done by that VIN number. So they're not going to know anything about more than what the, the VIN number identifies it as. Like in my case, a van, an Econoline 450 van. Not a cutaway, nothing more than a van. So sounds easy, right? You get insurance for a van, sounds easy. So when I was planning uh, the purchase of this truck, and, and you guys know if you watch my early videos, I drove from New York down to Arkansas to buy this truck. I'd done a bunch of research, like I said. I was apprehensive about getting the insurance. Didn't need to be, but I was. So I decided on this truck, I made my down payment, and then I asked the seller, um, a guy named Jason, if I could get the VIN number so that I could get insurance on it for the drive from Arkansas back to New York. I got the VIN number from him. Uh, at the time, I already had uh, an auto policy. I had my, my daily driver car and then my KTM motorcycle. So both of those were on a policy from this same insurance, major insurance carrier. So I got the VIN number from him. I sat down at their website. I put in the information to add a new vehicle. And I got a response back from their website that says I wasn't able to add it and that I would need to call to be able to add it. I wasn't able to do it on the website. So I was like, uh-oh, right? Because I had heard the rumors. What happened, I'm sure, was that their automated system that uh, runs in the back end of their website, it didn't know what to do with the vehicle I was trying to add because it's considered, I think, a heavy duty type vehicle, um, commercial type vehicle. So what did I do? I immediately picked up the phone and I called them. Hello, and thank you for calling. What can I help you with today? Hi, yeah, I was just trying to add a new vehicle to my policy, and your site is telling me that I needed to call to be able to do it. Okay, let me get some information from you, and I'll see if I can take care of this for you. Can I get the VIN number of the vehicle you want to add? Yeah, it's... one two. Okay, thank you. So this is a 2002 Ford Econoline? Yes, yeah, it's uh, it's an 02 Ford uh, E450 okay. van Econoline, yep. Um, so this is a van, or this is a van truck of some kind? Yeah, it's, uh, it's like an old work truck, box truck, box truck kind of thing. I'm going to use it for camping. Yeah. Okay, I see. Okay. All right. I've added the 2002 Ford E450 to your policy with today is the effective date. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, today is perfect. Is there anything else that I can assist you with? No, I'm, I'm all set. You've been super helpful. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And thank you for choosing for your insurance needs. If you have two minutes to complete a brief survey. Okay, so from that, didn't sound very difficult, did it? But you could tell, um, and I could tell when I was speaking with the young lady, that there was something on her end that was making her a little unclear or unsure on how to proceed at some points. So my guess is that 
she and and people in her position they don't see that type of vehicle day in and day out being added to policies that's my theory so it was just something a little different for her you did hear that she was questioning me on you know what is this what is this thing and you didn't hear me call it an ambulance nowhere in that conversation did I use the word ambulance because at that point the truck wasn't an ambulance anymore it had been decommissioned it wasn't going to be used in a, a life-saving fashion you know EMT type vehicle at the point when I was getting ready to insure it, it was just a, a van with a box on the back with some cabinets in it. Not, not really dissimilar to a lot of different work trucks out there. You heard me uh, refer to it as it's an old work truck, box truck kind of thing. That's exactly what I said because that's what it was at the time and that's what it still is. It's an old work truck box truck kind of thing with cabinets so I wasn't lying <laughs> you know I hate to use that word but I was uh, describing the truck as best I could for what it was when I was adding insurance to it now that's not the end of of the story you know that phone call pretty cut and dry I received my my insurance cards for the truck uh, right away by email and when I went down to get my rig down in Arkansas, I had valid insurance on it. And I had a, a printed uh, insurance card in my hand when I took that drive. About 10 days later, about 10 days after adding the truck to my policy, I got a form in the mail. I got a letter from my insurance carrier. And it said that I needed to complete this form, sign it, and mail it back to them. So when I first when I first read the form, I said, "Oh, geez, this is um, you know becoming involved." But once I read through the form, I saw that it was a it was a standard declaration form that I needed to fill out and sign, you know, verifying these things are true by signing it. And what the form wanted to know was, do I use my vehicle for business purposes? And if so, what percentage of its overall use is for business? So that section I filled out, it is not used for business. And 0% of its usage is for business. The other information that it wanted to know was, does it have any signage on it? You know, phone numbers, business name, that kind of stuff. For that section I filled out, it has no signage on it. These things were all true. So I completed that form, I signed it, and I mailed it back to them. This was in March of 2019. I've never heard another thing from them about the vehicle, vehicle type, anything like that. So I know there's a lot of you out there that are already in the fleet and you're driving and living in an ambulance. And if you have a story that you wanna share or if you have a piece of information that you want to share with others that are out watching this video, please put it down in the comments below or shoot me an email and I can share it with everyone. If you have insider information, like if you ever worked in the insurance industry or you, you know someone that does and you have some tidbits of info that would be helpful to people out there, definitely share that with us. Again, either in the comments or, or send me an email. My email address is always down below in the video description. Anyone can send me an email anytime. Please do. The goal of this informational video is to make insurance a non-issue for those of you that are thinking about getting an ambulance. It's not an issue. You can get insurance. You just have to remember to accurately describe the truck when you're seeking insurance. It's not an ambulance anymore. It's a truck. It's a work truck with cabinets on it. Now, I don't feel like not mentioning that it was an ex-ambulance. I don't feel like that's being dishonest or untruthful. What does it matter what the truck used to be? It's just what it is now. And when you're 
in possession of this ambulance it's not it's not an ambulance anymore it's a truck it's a van or it's a pickup truck with boxes on the back toolboxes utility boxes equipment boxes whatever you want to call them because that's what they were when these things were in service these cabinets held equipment and the tools of the trade uh, those just happened to be in the medical trade but those were uh, cabinets that held tools and equipment if you've run into trouble trying to get insurance for your truck and you want to share what has happened to you put it down in the comments or you you ran into a problem that you were able able to overcome please share that with everyone i don't want there to be kind of a a misconception that getting insurance for the for these old trucks is is a problem because it's just not i know in the video i've kind of skated around who my carrier is i just didn't want to put that out there it is a major carrier and some of you that have emailed me privately i've shared that information with you i don't know that uh the major carriers will be very different on this just the key to remember is that you're not insuring an ambulance you're insuring a work truck and with that basic i think piece of information right there you're going to have success Again, I'm not the I'm not the expert know-it-all, but I I do know what I went through, and I have had conversations with a lot of ambulance owners and a lot of people planning to buy ambulances and people that have just bought ambulances. So I've gathered up quite a bit of knowledge in the time that I've been sharing all these videos with everyone. So uh, do I know everything about this? No, but I think I have a pretty good sense of what's going on just from all the information that I've gathered and, and then what I went through myself. In my case, uh, as that call kind of showed, it wasn't really difficult. I wasn't able to do it on their, their like automated website system. And I don't think that's really surprising because the truck is not your normal you know, Honda Civic, uh, Ford Taurus kind of vehicle. It's a heavy duty work truck kind of vehicle as the VIN identified it as. So I'm not surprised that the website wasn't able to handle it, but via the phone call, a simple, simple process. I was in and out of the phone call within two or three minutes. And if I had to do it all over again, I would do it the exact same way. Uh, describing the truck not as it was but as it currently is thank you everyone everybody be safe and be good upcoming holidays I hope everyone has a great great Christmas we'll see everybody real soon take care be safe bye